Hello everybody, uh, I'm Cardi, I'm a student filmmaker, and today I'm going to show you kind of my workflow in DaVinci Resolve in terms of color grading, because I've had a couple people ask, well, how are you getting what you're getting? And it's like, well, there's no real professional way, I'm just kind of doing it by what looks nice. So I'm going to show you how I get what I get in case, you know, you like that look and you want to do that too. Um, you know, because I think, you know, we should be able to share this kind of stuff and not, like, make people pay for it. <coughs> cough, cough. But it's fine. Uh, so... What we're going to do first, you know, we have three clips here. Uh, these two are from the same scene. And this is a different thing. This is outside just to kind of show you, you know, how the conditions vary uh, across, like, my look. Uh, these are from my latest short film, Genghis Khan. Would not recommend watching it because we were very rushed. But visually, I think it looks okay. Other than that, it's it's a very, very rough film. Um, so let's let's start. Uh, we're going to start with this first clip here, and I'm going to start with uh, a color space transform. Now, what I like to do here is uh, the color space start with 4K Film Gen 3. A lot of people would probably say, like, well, why aren't you using the Pocket 4K color space? Uh, it doesn't look as nice in terms of the way that it displays skin tones, greens and blues, etc. I, I can show you that later. The next thing we're going to do is our uh, gamma is the Pocket 4K Film Gamma because it is the Pocket 4K. And so for our color space, this is where it gets fun. We're going to use the Airy Alexa because, yeah, and also Aerie Log C color space, or out output gamma, because the Aerie Log C curve gamma thingy is just really pleasing to start with. Um, gives you a very flat image and gives you a lot of room to kind of tweak with things. Whereas, you know, when you first start off, this already is kind of contrasty, so I don't like to start with this. I feel like this is the better better way to start. You could, I mean, you could also do a city and film log, but... I don't have as much experience with that one, but maybe one day. So we're going to label this node. You don't have to do this. It's just, you know, CST airy. And then we're going to make a new node, add serial. And this is where the fun stuff happens. Um, notice I, ha I haven't touched uh, exposure or anything yet. That that's going to come later because I want to get the effects on first before I do anything crazy. So let's let's move on to the very next thing which is, we're going to, um, sorry, I'm catching myself here. <laughs> we're going to uh, saturate our colors, but through through this. So we need to start with Aerie Alexa, and then rec, shit, rec 7 for our uh, color space. So that way we have the saturated colors that have passed through the color space transform. I don't want to convert the gamma to rec 709 because what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply a drum roll please a LUT you're probably thinking well why you shouldn't do a LUT that's stupid I don't, I don't think so um, sure you should only use LUTs for monitoring you know whatever but uh, y you know why why not use like a film emulation LUT like those are fun I really like those alright so let's see Part my mouse is really finicky so I might miss it film looks Oh god, oh god, oh god. This one. Really like this one. So, off the bat. This is overexposed, isn't it? Yeah. Um, also, let me label this. Sorry, I kind of go all over. I do not do things linearly, so I apologize about that. Film, emu, what? So yeah, that's my three-node kind of workflow. Uh, so let's go back to the beginning here. Change it from raw default to clip. And, oh, well, yeah, that, that explains it. So yeah. Uh, still very, very overexposed. Um, first off, let's turn on highlight recovery because it just looks nice to do that. And let's pull our exposure down. Um, I don't do this in a scientific way. I just kind of eyeball it a lot, you know, because it's like, well, I got to gotta make sure these aren't blown out, but I got to make sure this isn't too dark. And so you kind of get used to what, you know, that stuff looks like after a while. I'm not saying I'm seasoned by any means. I'm not. I'm really not. Uh, and then... In terms of white balance, I don't want to refine that anymore because, like, that seems perfectly balanced. The LUT is giving it more of a blue bias and, uh, and like, shadows and midtones, but, you know, that, that, that's the LUT. That's, that's, not, that's not me. Uh, one other thing I like to do here, you don't have to do this, but I like to change it to Rec 709 uh, in terms of the color space of, like, the Blackmagic Raw clip. The only reason I do that is because it gives you additional saturation to kind of mess with um, instead of boosting it all, like, here in a node. 
Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You can do it either way. But I just like to have that additional saturation to apply the LUT onto. So I don't have to apply the saturation after the LUT and kind of screw. I, I think the LUT should be the very last thing in the chain, in my opinion. And that's what I'm trying to make it uh, as the, the final step in the chain. So we have this as a base for this shot. Let's go ahead and do it to these other two shots here, which, okay. Well, that one looks really fucking warm. But let, let's, let's mess with this one. Um, yeah. This looks okay, uh, but we are <laughs> we're clipping here. So let's pull that exposure down because this shot needed it. I th I'm pretty sure I did actually clip a lot of stuff here. I didn't mean to. It was just operator error. We did have a gray card, but that doesn't seem to really help us here because I don't have any. I don't have a false color thing. So let's see. Let me judge off her skin tones. This fine actress. She was brilliant for the three lines that she had. Um, yeah, I, I'm not saying that sarcastically. I mean that. Let's see. So I need to find like a nice balance. I think this looks pretty good. These these are still hot in terms of saturation, which you know we will refine that. But this is still a very good starting point. So. Actually, oh, I, I did touch exposure just a little bit in, in camera, so let's pull that up just a bit. Good. And yeah, you can see that it's there's some hats here, so yeah, we were definitely hard clipped, which is unfortunate. But the highlight recovery does help. Now, don't use highlight recovery all the time, because I shot a fire scene, and like that just made it look horrible. So let's go to this. Let's balance this out. Daylight. Uh, maybe. No. no, let's go in the opposite direction of what I want. Uh... Let's make it a little bit more cold. Not not that not that cold. I love the Vinci. So let's just let's start like with five thousand as a base. Um, that's looking maybe fifty two just to give it some warmness. Yeah, there we go. See that, that that's I'm happy with that. And uh, let me just put this back to zero just so I can make sure that I refine this to the way that I want. And that seems like a pretty decent. Uh... Oh, let's try this. There we go. I feel like we've exposed that pretty well. All three of these are very hot in saturation, but you kind of get what my starting point is. So uh, let's 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 dial in the saturation just a bit. Um, let's start with start with this shot. In terms of the node that you want to start this with, I mean, you can do it with whatever. Uh, I'll just start on the the first one just so I don't screw around with the LUT too much. Because like I said, the LUT should be the final link in the chain. I don't want to mess with it. Uh, let's maybe do like 40 on that one well, that looks a little bit weak maybe 45 so we still have some still have some color here now let's do 45 on her as well make sure we're on the same node 45 okay doesn't look too hot there and then 45 here oh first first node there we go now that's that's looking a little bit better uh what what you could do with this shot as well, uh, and I I didn't do this in the final film, but you could let's say put this at ISO like 800 or something, and then pull the exposure down, and you'll have like more dynamic range allocated to here. But we're focusing on him, not the window. That that's not the point of this. So I want to keep it at 400, the native ISO. So I kind of get a little bit of get the best of both worlds here, because I want the dynamic range in the shadows, but also the highlights. And so just as like a this is what I do roughly. When I start grading, I'd always like to get it to this point and then kind of go from there. So what you've seen right now is essentially like the bare minimum of what I like to do. I will. This is going to go on for a couple more minutes because I, I want to get more into like the crazier stuff that I like to do. So let's from here on. This is all optional, I suppose. So you don't you don't really have to do it, but you can. So yeah. Now what we're gonna do next? Uh, because. Let me double check. I think I need to turn saturation mapping on because we were, yeah, we're going into a different color space. So yeah, the second node, optional, but, you know, just to be safe, just to make these colors within legal limits. Uh, when you convert from airy color space to rec 7, saturation map that shit. So you, you want all your colors to, you know, kind of, you, you don't want to clip color channels because that, that'll look really bad after the fact. Um, and so here's, here's where stuff gets fun. Output blank. I, I don't like using output blinking. I like putting in like the manual timeline settings of you know one nine two zero by eight oh four eight oh three whatever you use. But I'm just going to use this for right now, just uh, for sake of easiness. So here is where 
in theory, you know, I, I think I'll create another LUT. Or not another LUT, another node, sorry. And this is where I use one of my favorite plugins, Film Convert. Look at that. Look at that. That looks nice. Um, now, so I know some people, when they use Film Convert, they like to, you know, okay, well, we'll go in and choose the pocket 4k profile and just start there i think that doing that see well no this is not the best example let me go <laughs> shit i fucked that up sorry i think that the profiles for both the airy log and pocket 4k are way too contrasty and strong as is i like to s start it at the end of the chain well i know i said the lut should be the end of the chain but i also like this to be on the end of the chain too i lied sorry um so we're gonna call this film convert and this is where you can kind of really hone in on the look that you want. Because I already have a film emulation LUT on, but I, I kind of like... I like to be very dramatic in terms of, like, my look. Uh, I do have a look. Uh, I'm not professional enough to say that this is my look, because, you know, I'm just a fucking student filmmaker. What do I know? I, I really don't know much. But, uh, you know, it's it's nice to, like, have a visual style, I guess. Uh, you, you know, you have all black and white and find, you know, the, the one that works for you. I, I've had a lot of luck, uh, with, with these two. Personally, very much like Viz 3. Um, the Fuji ones also look really nice. Um, very familiar with Fuji film stock, because a lot of productions that I watch were always shot on Fuji. I thought the color was very nice. Um, so yeah, I think, I think this looks really nice as, as a look. These are not the exact settings I use on my film. Um, I did, I did it totally differently, but I've learned a lot since making this film three weeks ago. So, uh, yeah. And then when you apply this, you may have to adjust your exposure just a tad after the fact. Um, but so let's compare without it with, it just gets, it makes your reds and blues and greens just so much more pleasing. Like, look at that. It looks so nice. And you're not making it too contrasty or anything like it doesn't feel like I'm throwing another filter on it. I mean, I am, but it feels very organic. Um, and also film grain. I don't like to go too crazy on this, uh, like that. See, that's that's that is ridiculous because that's eight millimeter. Uh, Sixteen is also way too much. Super thirty-five, a little bit too chunky. Full frame, yeah, okay, that's nice. I like. I don't like to go heavy-handed, so I usually go fifty to make it very subtle. Like you can still see it here. If I turn it off, yeah, it's gone. But I don't like it to be the most noticeable thing in my image. Because I'm not shooting on film. I mean, as much as I'd love to shoot on a Bullock's camera and, you know, get that nice 16 mil look. It's, it's I'm just not shooting that. Uh, you can, you know, tone in your saturation here. Or do whatever you want. Uh, also, I always do grain gamma fix because it does kind of adjust uh, gamma just, just a tad. And I like to make sure that that is compensated for. Um, yeah, like so far, this is this is a pretty nice looking shot. Just, just with bare, bare minimum effort, I guess. Um, and you could go in further and, you know, uh, what is it? Luma versus Sat and kind of desaturate your shadows and stuff. All that stuff that Avery Peck tells you not to do. I would subscribe to Avery Peck, by the way. I, the, he's how I've learned a lot of how to do this. Um, yeah, you could use a qualifier and, you know, isolate your skin tones and saturate those how you want. Um, like I said, I don't do it the most professional way in the world. I just think that at a bare minimum, I'm like, this is fun. Like, I think, to me, this looks really good. Um, once I further refine it, of course, because that's, that's too much. Let's do negative three. Maybe, maybe negative four. I, I don't know. It, it feels like I'm possibly underexposing it at this point. So I'm just not going to touch it. And then I'm going to apply this node, um, the pen node to select the clips. And there we have our look all of these our shadows are now a little bit boosted we could refine that more um i probably would but uh i you obviously people you guys know how to do that if you're watching this so i'm not going to waste time with the video but th this is kind of like how i go about grading my shots i convert to airy log space uh then do my saturation through a color space transform i don't convert gamma to rec 7 through color space transform um i just convert i just get that addition i get that saturation out of it Drop a film emulation LUT, and the one that I used was uh, Rec 7 283D65. You can use the other ones, but I just like this bottom one a lot. And you can also use Fuji. Uh, and if you're working in the DCI-P3 color space, yeah, you know, go go with those. And then film convert. Yeah. Uh, 
you don't have to do the film convert part. You could stop with the film emulation lot. Like, so if I took that out, that, that's that's still a very nice image. Some would argue that that's probably better. But, you know, I like to take take this image to the extreme. And you can also further refine your highlights and stuff. Uh, but yeah, that's just how I approach it. I hope this video was of some use to some of you. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, like if you say, oh, well, you shouldn't be doing that, or, hey, I really like that, I'm going to use that look, then hey, I please let me know, because I, I hope that you got something out of it. And uh, please subscribe for more content. I, I'm not a vlogger by any means. I don't like vlogs. Uh, it's not, not my thing. But I do like making narrative pieces, and I'm working on more films over the coming coming year. I've got a, doc, a documentary in the works right now, which I think will be really interesting for you guys to see. Uh, two of them, actually. So, yeah, please subscribe. I'm Cardi. Once again, thank you for stopping by, and hope you enjoyed this, and uh, may Michael Bolton be with you. Praise be.